QA started in 2008 following the banking crisis caused by misuse of the lending markets and the economy has been in life support ever since. In September 2019, a month before Bill Gates' event 201, the overnight money market seized. The Federal Reserve had to step in printing 50 to 100 million dollars per night to try and fix it. But there was no fixing it. Since they have expanded the money supply by between 20 to 25 percent under the guise of relief rather than what is another banking crisis. History tells us this money printing ends with the collapse of the currency and the economy it is attached to. Since 1971, when the dollar as the reserve currency came off the gold standard, all currencies have been fiat. They are backed by nothing and dependent on faith. Only 3% of the money supply is physical notes and coins. The other 97% is debt-based. Debt brings money into existence. You borrow 100,000 and the banks are allowed to create that money from the ether and loan it to you with interest. In the reverse case, it's important that you know that when you deposit money into a bank, it no longer belongs to you. The banks can legally invest 90% of it and they provide you with interest for this. In 2008, we saw bank bailouts. But as of 2014, Ireland and the UK have agreed to bank bail-ins instead, meaning they can legally take your money in a crisis. This is what happened in Cyprus in 2013. The government claims to guarantee a certain amount of deposits, but only hold less than half a percent. So good luck getting your money back. So the credit markets are under stress. What is the best pressure release valve for the credit markets? To hold back a collapse? It's a weaker economy. This could be part of the reason the economy was shut down. The difficulty they now face in opening back up is when you combine an increase in money supply with an increase in velocity, you're inviting inflation. In 2008, QE was given to the banking sector and large corporations, but in 2020, it was also given to the general public, readily available now to spend. By keeping sectors of the economy closed, you're breaking the velocity. Velocity is the number of times the same amount of money changes hands. An increased velocity will lead to inflation, but it isn't essential for it. Couple this with the inevitable increased demand for debt when the economy does open back up, and people are taking out loans again, and this could pop the debt bubble. This financial system is held together with debt. When you buy a loaf of bread, there could be 10 different transactions of credit to get it to your door between manufacturers, suppliers and distributors. Mathematically, credit is doomed to break and this will seize the entire economy. This is why the banks were considered too big to fail. If credit isn't functioning, then products won't be created. When the credit market fails, so does the entire economy. So what do they do? Inflation is inevitable. More money is chasing the same amount of goods and services. That's just how money works. It has been evident in property for a long time, but it's recently showing up in commodity prices like lumber, copper, and also in food prices. Inflation initially raises asset prices and then filters down into living costs. The last to inflate is wages, making it increasingly difficult for the less wealthy to buy property as their wages only meet their living expenses. The government have got themselves into overwhelming debt, so they can't raise interest rates, or they won't be able to service that debt, as they can barely meet the interest requirements. It seems they are planning to let inflation rise, trying to maintain some control over it and inflate away the debt. Inflation is a hidden tax. Just as they inflate away the debt, they inflate away your purchasing power and you slowly lose everything you've worked for. With inflation and bank bail-ins, they're taking your money. The danger here is hyperinflation if control and faith are lost. Look at Venezuela and Zimbabwe, where currency litters the streets and it has so little purchasing power that it isn't even worth picking up. We are moving into a central bank digital currency. This has already been rolled out in China with Sweden, Turkey and Iran following. With digital currency, the government have complete control. 
as it is programmable. It is a loss of your freedom and privacy. They can control velocity by programming it with expiry dates or deciding where in the economy can be spent. They can limit your leisure spending, prohibit you from buying certain items, or only allow spending on basic food items and rent. They can tax and fine directly. They have control. They can incentivize you to spend or save with negative or positive interest rates respectively. How would you implement a control agenda? I would collapse the economy so that there is no independent businesses, therefore making everyone dependent on the state. I'd provide them with a generous universal credit system, then slowly reduce it or inflate it away. The concept of UBI has been about for some years now. Over 80% of jobs that make moderate to low wages are predicted to be automated away by 2030. Humans are becoming surplus to requirement. In the fourth industrial revolution, according to the World Economic Forum, our bodies will be so high tech, we won't be able to distinguish between what's natural and what's artificial. A future of superhumans, it's frightening. They are also proponents of the green energy carbon tax movement, which if you look into it, is repackaged. They are telling us that if we pay more taxes and stop eating meat, it will cool down the planet. The middle and working classes will be eroded and replaced with robots, AI and big corporations, and given a basic income. So how is this funded? The Davos IMF concept is that you will own nothing and be happy. So is the idea to confiscate or severely limit all private property? The other option is taxes, but the rich don't pay taxes. The loopholes are designed to be beneficial to them, but too costly for us. While a universal basic income is proposed, the more effective solution to stop the wealth divide would be a universal maximum income with a wealth cap. Let them have 20 million, that's a lot of money, they can buy all the houses and yachts that they want, but it would limit their amount of control and influence. This is the biggest heist of wealth transfer in history. The media does not inform you. Its purpose is to distract and advertise to you. The economy has collapsed under the weight of debt-fueled greed and the media are silent. Billionaires have increased their wealth by 28% during the crisis, gained at the expense of small businesses. The stock market is fake and it is a rigged game, fueled by money printing and doomed to crash. The old world is not coming back. A group of billionaires are deciding how the rest of the world should live and they have the ear of the government that claims to represent you. When you hear Johnston, Trudeau and Biden say build back better, that is a Davos concept, a collection of non-elected private billionaire influencers. If we submit to a digital currency, we lose control and privacy. This is what you really need to wake up to. Furlough is psychological prepping for UBI. You are not being paid to stay at home. You are being paid not to revolt. If you know the pounds, dollars, etc. are losing purchasing power, why would you keep them? This is why people are moving to hold assets such as silver, gold, land and property instead and transferring currency to crypto to outrun the inflation that is already becoming evident. There is also a ridiculous increase in shipping costs. COVID impacted the supply chain. China stockpiled containers and the system broke. This led to a problem with stock on shelves. When it is fully operational again, the additional costs will be passed on to the consumer. It would be wise to buy supplies to combat any shortages while the system resets. Better looking at them than looking for them. Hold gold, silver, crypto to maintain a degree of autonomy from the upcoming digital system. I am not a financial advisor. I would advise you to do your own research and find what works for you. The problem is our fiat currency is failing. Thousands have preceded it and they have all failed due to debasement of the currency. We have to be aware of this so we can prepare and work to fight against the oncoming erosion of our freedom and of our privacy.